Zachary Davis was born on July 27, 1997, to Melane and Chris Davis, who also had a one-year-old son, Josh. Zachary was always a quiet child with a history of mental illness. When he was nine years old, his father, Chris, died of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Zachary became depressed after his father died and was hospitalized for psychiatric treatment. Zachary Davis was 15 years old when he murdered his mother with a sledgehammer and attempted to murder his brother by setting fire to the house. Zachary had a history of mental illness, but no one could have predicted what he did. Zachary Davis was described as anything but normal, whispering every spoken word as if trying to hide his true voice. August 10, 2012 began like any other day for Zachary Davis family until midnight when Zachary bludgeoned his mother to death and set fire to the family home in an attempt to destroy evidence and kill his brother. The incident shocked everyone, and even the courts debated whether the young man was pure evil or disturbed. According to Zachary's paternal grandmother, he was taken to Dr. Bradley Freeman at Vanderbilt University Medical Center shortly after his father's death. The psychiatrist told the family that he suffered from some kind of mental defect. Zachary said he heard voices and was diagnosed with schizophrenia and depression, and although Zachary was normally calm, he was eventually losing everything. Zachary went through two common phases, including numbness and depression, but failed to reach phase 3, recovery. His mother pulled him out of the clinic shortly after the start of his recovery which was the reason his grandmother gave at the trial that given the murders, this would not have happened if Zachary had received adequate medical care. In one of his sessions, Zachary told Dr. Freeman that he frequently heard the voice of his father, who died in 2007. He also told Dr. Freeman that on August 10, 2012, his father's voice told him to murder his mother. However, psychologists described Zachary's situation as normal, as people descend into depression at a young age after the death of close friends. While his mother worked hard as a parent and trained as a triathlete, she did her best to survive the death of her husband, she tried everything to keep the boys happy, but she did not know that his youngest son was beyond her grasp. Zachary often spoke in a monotone whisper and wore the same hoodie every day. He had an app on his phone about serial killers and another that listed torture devices. You can spell slaughter without laughter, the anecdote at the start of his notebook. However, Zachary was not known to be outwardly violent until the night of August 10, 2012. Zachary, his 16-year-old brother, and his mother went to a movie together. When they returned, Zachary packed several items into a backpack and satchel, including clothes, notebooks, toothbrushes, gloves, a ski mask, and a claw hammer. It seemed like he wanted to run away from home, but in reality, there was something sinister at play. Melanie went to bed at 9 p.m. While she was asleep, her youngest son Zachary took the sledgehammer out of the basement and entered her room. He beat her to death and beat her almost 20 times. Then, covered in blood, he closed her door, went into the family's playroom, and soaked the house with whiskey and gasoline before setting it on fire. He closed the door and fled the house. He set the house on fire with the intention of killing his brother Josh, but because he closed the door to the playroom, the fire did not spread, and all his planning went in vain, his brother was awakened by the fire alarm. When Josh went to pick up his mother, he found her dead. Josh escaped the fire and Zachary was found by the authorities nearly 10 miles away from his home. He told authorities that I didn't feel anything when I killed her, Zachary Davis explained how the voice of his father told him to kill his mother in a videotape confession presented as evidence to the court. When a detective asked Zachary if he would carry out the attack if he could go back in time, Zachary said, I would probably kill Josh with a sledgehammer as well. Did he, his father, Chris, tell you to do anything specific to your mother? Defense attorney Randy Lucas asked him during the trial. Zachary said no and showed no remorse when investigators presented him with pictures of his mother's blood-soaked body. In fact, he didn't show any remorse at all. I was worried that I'd miss, Zachary said when asked why he chose the sledgehammer as his murder weapon, explaining that the tool gave him the highest chance of killing her. During the trial, 
The jury was also presented with Zachary's interview with Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil asked, why did you kill her? And Zachary said, she wasn't taking care of my family. He started laughing as he described how large and heavy the murder weapon was, and described the sound the sledgehammer made when it connected his mother's head it was a wet thumping sound. I wanted to make sure she was dead, Zachary said when asked about why he hit his mother multiple times. He even tried to blame the murder on his brother. This claim surprised the defense attorney, who openly admitted that Zachary Davis had killed his mother with a sledgehammer. That claim did not help his case and also ruined the defense's chance of getting a lenient sentence for Davis. Lisa House, a retired Sumner County Sheriff's deputy, read a handwritten confession discovered in one of Davis' notebooks during his arrest. Davis claims in an August 10th entry that his older brother raped him shortly after the family moved to Hendersonville. I was raped that day by him, and I've been planning to kill him ever since, the journal entry stated. Davis writes in an August 11th entry, I killed Melanie and left Josh alone to suffer. I didn't have any feelings. I felt no remorse. My only genuine regret was that I did not give her a faster death. I didn't want her to be in pain. In his video recorded interviews with Major Don Lindsay, he told Lindsay that he killed his mom at around 11 p.m. and he struck his mother in the head with a sledgehammer at least 12 times. He said that he chose the sledgehammer because he was worried that he'd miss, and it gave him the highest chance of killing her. When asked if he would do it again, he said yes. He told the detectives that if given the opportunity, he would kill his brother with a sledgehammer as well. When they inquired about the rape allegations Davis makes against his brother in his confession, he tells them that his brother raped him and that he didn't tell anyone else except his mother, who did nothing about it. However, Josh said that he loved his brother and had learned of the rape accusation only after his mother was killed. The 12-member jury grappled with the notion that while Zachary had clearly committed the murder of his mother with intent, it was also obvious that he was deeply unwell. Dr. Phil tried to show compassion towards the teenager, when I look in your eyes, I don't see evil, I see lost. Did you kill your mother? Yeah. You killed your mother. And why did you kill her? She uh, wasn't taking care of my family. Meaning you and your brother? Yeah. Is that who you mean? Uh -huh. And so because she wasn't taking care of you and your family, you decided to kill her. Did you think about discussing it with her instead of killing her? I didn't think it wouldn't do anything. You thought it won't do any good to talk to her, so I'll just kill her. When did you decide to kill your mother? I decided the day I did it. And the method you chose was what? Uh, beating her to death. And you, you beat her to death with what? A uh, sledgehammer. Uh -huh. And how many times did you hit her with the sledgehammer? I don't remember. About. Did you hit her once or did you hit her 10 times or 100 times? I'd say about 20 times. Was this a three pound sledgehammer, five pound sledgehammer? I don't know. Heavy? Yeah. It's way bigger than a hammer. <laughs> right? Mm hmm Yeah. And where did you hit her? In the head. Uh -huh. Where was she when you did this? She was in her room. What was she doing? She was asleep. OK, so your mother was asleep in her room. And you opened the door and went in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you need to help me understand here. You're standing outside her bedroom door. You've got a sledgehammer in one hand. You've got your hand on the doorknob with the other. And you open that door. What's going through your head at that moment? I don't remember. 
My mind was pretty much blank. Where did you get the hammer? I uh, got it from our garage. Did you go out to the garage to get it that night? Uh-huh. And this was about 11 o'clock at night, right? Yeah. So where were you right before you went to the garage? Where were you when you made up your mind to do it? I was in the living room. Why kill her that night? Why not kill her a week earlier or a week later? Something made that night the night. I had enough. You had enough? Why that day? I just uh, thought it was a good time. You remember opening the door, right? It wasn't locked? It wasn't. Did you stand there and look at her for a minute before you did it? Yeah. Did you say goodbye to her in your mind? No. And when you swung that hammer the first time, did you swing it hard? Yes. Did you swing from over your head? Mm -hmm. I mean, was this a big swing from over your head? Did she make a noise? I couldn't just hear the hammer hitting her head. And what did it sound like? There was this uh, wet thumping sound. <laughs> yeah. How long before you hit her the second time? Just a few seconds. Did you think she was already dead? Uh, she woke up and she started uh, seizing up. Did she look at you? I uh, looked into her eyes, but uh, she didn't look at me. Zachary Davis's paternal grandmother, Gail Cron, appealed to his severe mental illness and the lack of help he received. She said that it wouldn't have happened if Zachary wasn't pulled out of his recovery. Every teacher, every guidance counselor, should have to stand trial with Zach. Cron said, Zach is not a monster, he's a child who made a horrible mistake. She believes that his mother, Melanie, failed to get Zachary the help he needed and that Melanie paid the mistake with her life. Dr. Freeman, who first diagnosed him, also testified in court that his judgment was driven by his psychosis, and he could not have premeditated the murder due to his mental illness. But the jury did not feel the same as Dr. Freeman and Cron, and Zachary was sentenced to life in prison after a jury took only three hours to reach a guilty verdict. A life sentence in Tennessee is for a minimum of 60 years with the possibility of parole after 51 years. <laughs> Zachary would be in his 60s by the time he could get out of prison. After a four-day trial, Zachary was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison plus another 20 years for the attempted murder of his brother. I think that Zach Davis is a little bit smarter and a little bit sneakier than we give him credit for, announced Sumner County District Attorney Ray Whiteley following the sentencing phase. The true motive behind the murders is still unknown. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.